everyone, welcome back to the Stitches and Scribbles channel. My name is Erin and for today's crochet with me video I'm actually going to be making one of my own patterns. So by the time you're seeing this video the pattern will be available for purchase in my Etsy shop so that you can make your own version. And the pattern that we're making today I originally wanted to call it the Lavender Paths shawl but I kind of have a book related theme going with my Etsy shop so I think I actually want to name it after a fictional character I just don't know who yet so hopefully I'll make a decision before the end of filming this video but this is the version that I will actually be taking photos of to use as reference photos within the pattern itself. For this project I have Big Twist Soft in the color Violet so it looks like this I do have three of these. Um, for this pattern, it's a rectangular shawl, so you probably need a pretty good amount of yarn, but it will be kind of adjustable so that you can use this pattern to make a scarf. You could use it to make a blanket if you wanted to, but this yarn has 320 yards in it, so you probably need about a thousand yards for the version that I'm making today. I'm also going to use a pretty big hook for this size yarn because I want good drape, so I am using a six and a half millimeter hook. We're going to get started by doing some kind of stitches that look like ridges to the side, and then we have kind of a more delicate stitch in the middle that reminded me of clusters of lavender blossoms. So let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so it is now the next day and I finished the first section of the shawl. So the way that this shawl works, or the way that I designed it, is that there's these kind of ribbed sections on either side with a different stitch panel in the middle because I thought these kind of looked like fence posts and I was inspired by flower gardens to make this. So now I'm actually going to move into the lemon peel stitch, which is alternating um, single crochets and double crochets. And then when you go back and do the second row of it, everywhere you had a double crochet, you put a single crochet and vice versa. And it makes kind of this wavy, like very textured stitch pattern that reminded me of lavender flowers when I did this the first time. So I'm going to keep going. This is the longer section. Um, so it'll have more rows in it than the ribbed section on the end, but then we'll do this rib section again at the end. It is now several days later, but I finished my first skein of yarn and I am quite a few rows into the lemon peel stitch section. I know it's called the lemon peel stitch, but to me it definitely looks like clusters of flowers, like when lavender or lilac flowers are all like bunched together. So I'm really liking how it's working up. I had some more thoughts for the pattern name. so. My last crochet pattern I released on my Etsy was called the Mirkwood Shawl, so I picked a place from a story. Mirkwood is from Lord of the Rings, if you don't know, and I wanted to maybe pick a place name for this shawl too, and I wanted something that was kind of classic but slightly whimsical because it is kind of a funky design, um, and for some reason I thought of Anne of Green Gables, so I think this is going to be called the Avonlea shawl. Um, one of the other books in that series is called Anne of Avonlea and I think that would just be a pretty name for this shawl but I'm going to keep going with my lemon peel stitch. I 
think I said this already, maybe. But I finished the first skein of yarn, I'm working on the second one, and we're just gonna keep going. I am ready to do the final step of this shawl, which is going back to the ribbing stitch that I did at the beginning to finish off the other side. So I'm going to do another few rows of that as it says to in the pattern and then show you the finished design. Here is the finished shawl. So you can wear it just over your shoulders, kind of almost like how you'd wrap a blanket around your shoulders. So I'm hitting everything behind me. But yeah, it's just a really cozy rectangle shawl. This would make a great prayer shawl or comfort shawl to give um, to someone who needs it. It also makes a great lap blanket. I'm also gonna include some directions in the written pattern of how to adapt it but you could easily adapt this pattern to make a scarf by just doing fewer rows. You could turn it into a blanket by doing um, an alternating pattern of the two different stitch patterns that are used, all sorts of things you can do with it. Thank you so much for watching. The information for purchasing the written pattern will be in the link, will be in the link, will be in the description box below, as well as all the information to follow me on other forms of social media. And if you liked this video today, please hit that subscribe button so that you can be notified of all of my crafty content. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.